You know, last week we spoke in this sanctuary about breaking free, and we talked about breaking free from strongholds. Amen. And uh, that message is out on the YouTube channel. I'd highly recommend if you haven't listened to it, ask the Holy Spirit to impart the beautiful Word of God into your soul, how to be free from anything that is strangling you in your soul or in your mind or your body or whatever. Say, there is freedom from strongholds. Amen. Today we're going to talk about trust. The Lord wants to speak to us here this morning, and let's listen to what God is saying to the church here this morning. We want to talk about absolute trust. Today we're going for a little ride, if you will. And uh, life sure does feel that way sometimes, doesn't it? So I'm going to read you John 16, 33. I have told you these things so that in me you may have peace. And in this world you will have trouble. That's the words of Jesus. He warned us that there will be difficulties, but take heart because I have overcome the world. Amen? And that's in John 16, 33. You know, as we are on the roller coaster of life, it often feels like we have no brakes and uh, with no power to overcome or stop what we're doing. And, well, today I've got good news, amen, for you. In this series, Break Free, we have already examined breaking free from strongholds last week, and today we're going to talk about absolute trust. Imagine life, think about this, imagine life rich, abundant, with forgiveness, no bitterness, no anger. Listen, listen carefully now what God has given me. Don't miss this. Imagine your life rich and abundant with forgiveness, no bitterness, no anger. Imagine your life with the calm of accepting things that you cannot change. Imagine your life with the dignity of courage needed to change what you can change and actually doing it. And actually doing it. Say, I got to do something. If you continue to do what you've always done, okay, you will get the same results. Amen. If you want different results, you got to do something different. Amen. Somebody said, I got to do something different. Amen. The incredible peace that comes from real wisdom. Amen. The ability to trust him with everything in your life. No anxieties and no chronic worries. Amen. That's what this series is all about, and I hope that you are catching the message. Amen. I sure hope that you are. There's a special note. From this point on in the message, we will let the Word of God speak for itself. Amen. Listen to the Word of God. The Word is its own defense. Listen to it. Consume it. Soak it. Soak in it, and let it saturate you. Let it change you. Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word of God. Amen. Say, man shall not live, come on, quote it with me, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word out of the mouth of God. Amen. We're going to look at some trust now, and this is so important. The Lord has touched my heart with some peace that I didn't think that I'd ever have again, and with some joy and strength, and the Lord has just done some wonderful things for me, and... Uh, Let's look at the definition of trust, and this is what we've got to get here today. This is really important. I believe the definition of trust is a firm belief in the reliability, truth, ability, and strength of something or someone. Amen. Something you're going to trust or someone you're going to trust. The acceptance of the truth of a statement without evidence or any investigation. Amen. That's the definition of trust. To commit someone or something to the safekeeping of, to the consign, and this is important, to give, hand over, turn over, assign. And we're doing this all with God today, amen, on our side. To depend on and expect and count on. Trust is not just believing that God can, but knowing that he will, amen. Will somebody repeat that with me? Okay, trust is not just believing that God can, but knowing that he will. Amen. Trust is not just believing that God can, but knowing that he will. Belief is foundational. Belief is enhanced by love. 
And faith as embellished by application becomes trust. Amen? It's really important that we are ready to move into a mode of trust. Amen? Somebody say, well, I believe. Well, you know, the devils also believe and they tremble. Amen? So believing is a good start, but it's not enough. Somebody said it's not enough. enough. Amen? It's not enough just to believe. Amen? We've got to go further than that. Amen? Trust is not just believing that God can, but knowing that he will. Amen. And this is important. I want you to hear this now. Listen carefully to your pastor right now. Belief is foundation. Repeat it after me. Belief is foundational. Belief enhanced by love equals faith. Because faith works through love. So when you fall in love with Jesus Christ... It'll take your belief to another level, and we call that faith. Now, faith that is embellished by action or application becomes trust. Amen. It is at a higher level than belief. Belief is an acceptance that a statement is true or that something exists. Belief enhanced by agape love takes belief to another level of ecstasy called faith. And without faith, it is impossible to please God. Amen. Say, we've got to have faith. Amen. It's important. And if you're struggling with a faith issue, as many are, I've experienced that a lot recently in in dealing and counseling and praying. I mean, this week has been incredible in the pastoral part, my job, if you will, and not just with the people in our church, but many people that I'm pastoring outside the church as well. And it's a really huge issue. People have a problem with their faith. Amen. If you have an issue with your faith, get some help. Say, get some help. Amen. Talk to somebody that has a lot of faith. Read the Word of God. Worship with me. The, the Lord is, is wants to touch your faith issue. Amen. And give you faith that you need. So belief is enhanced by agape love, and it takes belief to a new level called faith. But without faith, it's impossible to please Him. Trust takes it to a level of commitment without demand of evidence. Amen. Are you ready to go on this ride with me this morning? Or does this sound like, oh, come on, Pastor, this is stretching me a much. Hey, we got a beautiful day outside with the sunshine. Let's talk about something. How do I get a million dollars? I mean, come on. Yeah, everybody wants to know something that will help them, and that's good. This will help you. Amen. Say, this will help you. Trust takes it to the level of committal without demanding evidence. Amen. It takes you to the level of handover or turnover. Belief is the assurance that someone can walk a tightrope where trust takes it to the level of getting on the back of someone that is on the tightrope. Belief is assurance that somebody can walk a tightrope across Niagara Falls. I believe you can do that. Come on, let's do it. Cheer him on. Trust is totally different. Trust is getting on his back as he gets on the tightrope and walks across Niagara Falls. Trust is at a different level. Who's ready to go into the mode of trust? What does the Word of God say? Amen? Let's go to the Word of God. Everybody ready for that? Amen? Amen? The Word of God is where all the power lies. I believe the Lord has told me as a charter of this church to teach the Bible. Oh, well, wait a second. Isn't there a lot of other things you can talk about? There's politics. There's apologetics. There's all that. Well, they all have their place. But I believe what God has told me to do is to teach the Bible. Amen. Just so you understand that. So if you're here in um, a service in this church, you're just going to hear what the Bible says. Amen? Amen. I really do believe that. I'm not saying all those other things will have their place. They do. I'm just saying <laughs> what God has told me to do. Amen? Amen? Are you ready for that? So what does the Word of God say about this? We're going to take this one step at a time. We're talking about trusting God this morning. Say, He is my stronghold. Amen? Amen. Now, this is important. Psalm 18 and 2. All the scriptures will be on the big screen for those of you that can see that. Amen. The Lord is my rock. Amen. And my fortress and my deliverer. My God, my strength in whom I will trust. 
my buckler and the horn of my salvation and my high tower. Amen. We're talking about trusting God this morning. Amen. I'm going to go through a few scriptures here. Psalm 91. This is beautiful. The second verse. I will say of the Lord, he is my refuge and my fortress. My God in him will I trust. Amen. I believe that with all my heart, I will say of the Lord, amen. He is my refuge and my fortress, my God, in him will I trust. And Nahum 1.7, I always love the book of Nahum as one of the minor prophets, and that's a, that's a misnomer, by the way. The 12 books called the minor prophets, they're not the minor prophets, guys. They're major prophets, amen. They're just smaller than the other ones, that's all the books. The Lord is good, a stronghold in the day of trouble, amen. And he knows them that trust in him. Amen. Are you hearing what the word of God is saying? Now the Lord is saying to me, and this is important, we need to trust God. Why? Because he is my protector. Say protector. Amen. Second Samuel 22 and 31. As for God, his way is perfect. And I've been saying this ever since Carol graduated to heaven, that all God's ways are perfect. Say perfect. Perfect. Amen. His ways are higher than my ways. His thoughts are higher than my thoughts. As far as the east is from the west, so far is his ways than my ways. Amen. And he's, his thoughts are higher than your thoughts too. And his ways are higher than your thoughts and ways. Amen. Amen. Say, so as for God, his way is perfect. The word of the Lord is tried. He is a buckler to all them that trust in him, somebody said amen. amen. Psalm 7, 1, O Lord, my God, in thee do I put my trust. Save me from all them that persecute me and deliver me. Psalm 25, 1 and 2, unto thee, O Lord, will I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust in thee, not mine enemies triumph over me. Amen. This is so important. And Proverbs 30 and 5, every word of God is pure, and he is a shield unto all those that put their trust in him. Today we're talking about trust. We're talking about developing a level of trust. Let's go over this again. Say belief is wonderful, and that's foundational. Belief Okay, enhanced by agape love becomes faith because faith works through love. Amen. The Word of God tells us that. But then faith enhanced by what? Action, corresponding actions. This is important. Becomes trust. Amen. Because faith is important, but faith isn't enough. You've got to act and you've got to have corresponding actions. And of course, we'll talk about that a little bit more later. Amen. Let's say, trust God. Say it with me. It's on the big screen. Say, trust God. He will deliver us as he promised. Amen. Do you believe that? I don't know what you're facing right now. Some of you are facing some physical issues. Maria, it's amazing that you're here. Emily's been through so much. Amen. Look at Leslie when she went through last year. From July to what? Less up to what? November? From July to November. Near you, the end of October. Near the end of October. She was, well, I mean, I went to visit her many, many times, didn't I, Les? Amen. Amen. And it was incredible what she went through. But God has healed her body. Amen. And now she goes down my back steps and I say, somebody get in front of Leslie, please. <laughs> Make me nervous going down my step. But you have been healed. Amen. Amen. You don't even have any pain anymore. No. Somebody said amen. amen. Come on. Amen. Say, he will deliver as he promised, okay? Now let's read Psalm 9 and 10. And they that know thy name will put their trust in thee, for thou, O Lord, hath not forsaken them that seek thee. Amen. I don't know where you are in your level of trust. I know you're all believers, and I believe you all have faith. But what is trust? Trust is taking faith to another level. Trust is what? Getting on the back of the man that's on that tightrope going across Niagara Falls. Amen. It's not just saying, yeah, we can believe you do it. I just know that you can do it. And then cheer, cheer the guy on. Oh, that's wonderful. But the real level of trust is when you're ready to get on his back when he gets ready to cross Niagara Falls. That is trust. Somebody said trust. Amen. We're talking about trust here this morning. Amen. Psalm 37, 5, commit thy way unto the Lord, 
and trust also in him, and he will make it come to pass. Amen. Let's say it together. I love Psalm 37. If you haven't read Psalm 37 this week, go home and read Psalm 37. Amen. The whole chapter is phenomenal. Commit thy way unto the Lord. Come on, say it with me. Trust also in him, and he shall bring it to pass. Amen. Psalm 56, 3 and 4. What time I am afraid I will trust in thee. In God I will praise his word. In God I have put my trust. I will not fear what flesh can do to me. And then also in Isaiah 26 and 3, Thou will keep him in perfect peace, whose mind is stayed on thee. I'm trying to lead you into a path of glory and peace, guys. Amen. Anxiety and struggle of the soul. That's never the will of God. Amen? It's never the will of God to have anger and unforgiveness and anxieties and and, and fear and and all the things that torment the people of God all the time, guys. Come on. Do you know anybody that battles with fear? I mean, come on. We've been through the COVID mess, guys. I mean, everybody was battling fear through that. Amen? That will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed on thee because he trusts in thee. Now let's do another section. Trust God. Nothing on earth can compare. Amen. Psalm 118, another powerful chapter. It is better to trust in the Lord than to put confidence in man. Amen. And we're going to read out of Jeremiah 17 in just a minute, which is powerful too. Proverbs 3 and 5, trust in the Lord. Come on, you all know this by heart. Trust in the Lord with all thine heart and lean not unto thine own understanding. Amen. I guarantee that if you try to figure it out and try to say, you know, hey, I, I, I don't need any teaching. I don't need any instruction. I don't need to be refreshed in the Word of God. Yes, you do. We all need it every day. Amen. I need to be refreshed in the Word of God every day. Did you eat this morning? Did you eat yesterday? Did you have lunch yesterday? Did you have dinner yesterday? How about Thursday or Friday? Did you eat any of those days? You ate every meal, I'll bet, didn't you? Because your body needed the nourishment. How about your soul? Did your soul get fed the same way as your body? Amen? I challenge you on that. Amen? And that's so important. Amen? Let's read Jeremiah 17 now. This is a powerful, powerful chapter. And I just want to read a few verses. Are you ready? Say, blessed is the man that trusts in the Lord, whose hope the Lord is. For he shall be like a tree planted by the waters, and that spreadeth out her roots by the river, and shall not see when he cometh. Amen. Amen. This is so important. But her leaf shall be green, and shall not be careful in the year of drought, neither shall cease from yielding fruit. What a promise of God. Man, I don't know. This is precious to me. I was at my son and daughter-in-law's this morning early. I was up walking his grounds, got up for a very early morning walk, about six, I guess. It was barely light. And it was just so beautiful out there. And he lives on a a wooded lot, just a beautiful rural area down in Pittsgrove. And uh, and it was just so beautiful. I was just just hearing the voice of the Lord speaking about bearing fruit and 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 you know not being careful in the year of drought. This Jeremiah seventeen has just blessed me so much. What a powerful chapter this is. Let's read that again. But her leaf shall be green and shall not be careful in the year of drought. Neither shall cease from yielding fruit. I believe with all my heart that God wants all of us to bear fruit today. Amen. Say we bear fruit. We don't produce fruit. The Holy Spirit does that. Okay? Never say I produce fruit. You didn't get anybody saved or produce any fruit. You didn't do that. That's a lie. Amen. You bear fruit. Amen. You witness to the unsaved. We pray for the unsaved and to bring the prodigals in as we did this morning. Absolutely. But it's the Holy Spirit. Except the Spirit draw, they shall not be drawn to Father God. Amen. It's got to be the Holy Spirit. Amen. So the Holy Spirit brings us to a part of our lives saying that we will bear the fruit of Christ. Amen? Let's look at some reflections right now. What do we study so far, guys? Are you guys ready? All right? Say he is trustworthy. Come on, it's on the big screen. This is not a 
This is not a trick question. <laughs> Amen. The answers are on the screen. Amen. All right. First reflection. Say he's trustworthy. Amen. Number two. His word is trustworthy. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. What's the third one? He declares himself to be trustworthy. Amen. Is this, is this helping anybody today? Amen. What's that? It's not a trick question. The answers are on the screen. Amen. We honor him by what? By trusting in him. Amen. I love reflections. Here's some more. You ready? This is so good. Amen. We insult him by refusing to trust him. Amen. Say, I insult him by refusing to trust him. Let's stay on that just for a second. Have you insulted God? Have I insulted God? Where I, 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 don't, I don't trust him. I, well, the Bible says that, and, and, you know, and, and, and the preacher is saying that, and, and this seems to be, but then for some reason or other, I just can't seem to believe it. I don't expect it to happen. How many times did you pray a prayer and just didn't expect anything to happen? You prayed because it was the right thing to do. You prayed because it made you look good in front of other Christians. You prayed because it was just a feel-good moment. Amen. Many times we do that. But then did you expect the answer to your prayer? Amen. Say, we insult him by refusing to trust him. That's just a word of challenge. Amen. Whether we like it or not, we must realize we call him a liar by refusing to trust in his word. Amen. Would you call God a liar? Would you do that? I mean, that, that's, that's something you wouldn't do, right? Amen. But we do. We call him a liar when we refuse to trust in him. We sacrifice coveting blessings when we refuse to trust in his word. Now, you know, there's a lot of covenant blessings that God has promised. Amen. For example, the tithe is part of a covenant blessing. It's part of a covenant blessing. Amen. So it's very important to understand that as you give to the work of God, whatever it may be, maybe a missionary or maybe to a local church or whatever it is, when you give, it's important to understand that you're putting yourself in covenant with God. Amen. And then his promise is, it's so important, he promises to bless you so much that it'll be an overflow, that you'll have to give some of it away. You know, I've been through, just so you know, I preach the Bible, but I also preach out of a lot of experience as well. I remember the days when I had to make a choice between paying an electric bill or paying a tithe. See, I remember those days. I remember when I was laid off back in the year 2001. I remember that. I remember when I tried to get a job and couldn't get one. And I had seven children looking me in the face. I remember when I lost my job while we were building this house. And I was on the second deck nailing plywood down and and didn't have a job. I remember those days. I remember those days, guys. And and it's something. So so you're looking at somebody that's been around the block on a few things. Amen. Amen. So it's not that I'm just saying, oh, everything has always worked so perfect for me, and oh, the pastor has no problems or anything. Well, no, no, the pastor's got more problems than you in most cases. Amen? Doesn't matter who your pastor is. Amen? There's always a challenge. I know Stevie's pastor always said, if you aspire to be in ministry, you will be challenged in finances. Amen? You will be challenged in finances. Amen? Anybody that aspires to be in ministry. Now let's look at a few real-world problems. Everybody ready for this? We won't be long on this. Spiritual problems and struggles with your faith. Amen. The very first thing, let's look at the Word of God. Matthew 17, 20 says, Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, Move from here and, and, and to there, and it will move. Oh, come on, Pastor. That, that's, that's stretching me. What mountain is in your life? Mountain of bitterness? Mountain of unforgiveness? A mountain of anger? A mountain of financial stress? What mountain is it that you have to speak to? We sang about it this morning in that great song, Do it again. God's going to do it again. I've seen a mountain move, and he will do it again. Amen. Hallelujah. 
Now, this is so important to understand this. Because you have so little faith, I tell you the truth. If you have faith as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move, and nothing shall be impossible for you. I don't know. Does this mean anything to you guys? Is this, is this stirring your soul this morning, saying, God is speaking to me through Amen. Through someone else. He's just using the word. He's using me to read scripture and God is speaking to you. Amen. Say, God is speaking to me. First Timothy 4.12. Don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, but set an example for the believers in speech and life and love and faith and in purity. That's when Paul was training Timothy, young Timothy, to take over the church in Ephesus. He went to the city of Ephesus and established a church there, set it up, and then he was there for three years, and then he appointed young Timothy as the pastor of the church. And he was young. And he had a mixed father and mother. His father was a Jew and his mother was a Greek. Amen. That alone would have thrown some confusion in the matter because, you know, the Pharisees, they they, they, they just couldn't handle anybody enjoying anything other than the Jews. Amen. They thought they had a corner on everything, and they didn't. Amen. Christ came to break down every wall. Amen. To break down every wall. There was no more Jew, no more Gentile, no more male, no more female, no more black, no more white. No, he, he came to break it all down. Amen. Hallelujah. Say, we are all welcome at the foot of the cross. Amen. So don't let anyone look down on you because you are young, Paul told Timothy, but set an example for the believers in speech, in life, in love, and in faith, and in purity. Let's go to the great book of James, who the half-brother of Jesus wrote. What good is it, my brothers, if a man claims to have faith but has no deeds? How can such faith save him? The 15th verse, suppose a brother or a sister is without clothes and daily food, and and one of you says to him, well, go, I wish you well, keep warm and well fed, and you don't do anything to help him. (coughs) Hear what I'm saying? But does nothing about this special need. What good is it? Verse number 17, in the same way, faith by itself is not accompanied by action, is dead, but someone will say, you have faith, I have deeds. Show me your faith without my deeds, and I will show you my faith with my deeds. Amen. So what is the scripture saying to us here? It's saying that faith without corresponding action is dead. So therefore, you'll never get to a level of trust if you don't have corresponding action with your faith. Amen. Where did you get that, Pastor? That's out of the book of James. Amen? Go read the book of James. It's only five chapters, guys. You can probably read it in less than a half hour. Amen? What a powerful book this is. You believe that there is one God? Good. Even demons believe that, and they shudder. You foolish man, do you want evidence that faith without deeds is useless? Was not our ancestor Abraham considered righteous for what he did when he offered up his son Isaac on the altar? You see that his faith and his actions were working together, and his faith was made complete by what he did. Amen. So God took the actions of Abraham, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Amen. When you have health issues, let's talk about health. I know that's been a big issue. And if you're not having a health issue right now, please ask the Holy Spirit to put you in Sue Patty's body right now. Ask the Lord to help you to remember what Faye has went through and what Maria has went through and still is going through. Come on, we need to have compassion for those that have health issues. Okay, now, the Lord told me to do this. Are you ready for this? I'm not going to take long here this morning, guys. I know you all want to get to the lunch. The Lord is, come on, guys, come on. Enjoy. Amen. Come on. Scriptural references are going to be paraphrased into the first person. Are you ready for this now? What do I mean by that? I'm going to read a scripture in the first person. Okay? You all know what English is, right? And that's what, that's what I'm going to do. Now, this is what I said. First Peter 2.24 says, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. Amen. You know, I've had some things in my body I've been dealing with, little things, and... and uh, um, some, some big things, I mean, a whole variety of things, and all of us have different things to deal with. And, uh, and I quote constantly, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. That's right. Say, I am healed by the stripes of Jesus. It's on the big screen. 
That's 1 Peter 2.24, and it's also in Isaiah 53 and 6. Amen. Come on, let's go through this. All right? Mark 16.18. I shall recover from sickness by the laying on of hands. Amen. If you lay hands on me, that'll transfer the anointing that you have onto me. If I have the anointing to heal you, okay, not that it's me, it's the power of Christ working through me. You understand that, right? It's no, I I don't believe I have the power to raise the dead. That's only in Christ, amen. But he works through us, amen. He works through the church. I shall recover from sickness with the laying on of hands, amen. You're going to have an opportunity later on in this service or even while we're having lunch or whatever, go lay hands on someone, amen. Amen. Come up behind and put your hand on their shoulder and say, in the name of Jesus, lay hands on Maria, amen. God has done miracles in her body, and you're going to get all your strength back, Maria, and you're not going to feel tired all day long. The Lord is going to do miracles in your whole blood flow, your whole coronary system. That's a prophetic word. Say, I receive it in the name of Jesus. It is done. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's go on to the next one. I am forgiven from all my sin, and he heals all my disease. That's Psalm 103 and 3. Amen. Come on, let's, sing, let's confess it, guys. I love to hear you confess it. I am forgiven from all my sin, and he heals all my disease. Amen. I believe that with all my heart. Amen. My health is restored, and my wounds are healed. That's Jeremiah 30 and 17, someone that has an accident, especially, I use that scripture. That's an important one, Jeremiah 30 and 17. My health is restored. My wounds are healed. Amen. Now, here's the one that's really important. We're talking about health now. He cast out evil spirits and healed all that were sick. Amen. Another, in another version of the Bible, it says that he, excuse me, that he healed them all. Say, he healed them all. Amen. Except for those who wouldn't believe. Amen. He could not do works there in one of the towns. Which one of the towns was it? It was Nazareth, his hometown. Nazareth, he could not do money works there because the people wouldn't believe him. And he healed a few sick folk, it says, but primarily in Nazareth he couldn't do work because, oh, he's the son of the carpenter. He's not the Christ. Come on. We used to play ball with him on the, on the sand lot. Come on, you know. Uh, that, that, that's Jesus. I, yeah, nice guy, but he's not the Christ. Come on. And they wouldn't believe him. Even his own siblings didn't believe him. Did you know that? Jesus had siblings. Amen. He had siblings uh, and that were like his half-brothers and sisters. And even them wouldn't believe him until after the resurrection. He himself took on my infirmities and bare my sickness. Boy, I'll tell you right now, if you, don't, if you don't quote that after me, I'd be surprised right now. Come on, let's say it all together. He himself, he took my infirmities and bare my sickness. When he was hanging on the cross, he was bearing the sickness of cancer. He was bearing the shame of an adulterer. He was bearing the shame of a murderer. Amen. He was bearing the shame of someone that battled with lust. He was bearing all that as he hung on the cross. He took your sin and your sickness on himself. I just get so excited when I think about the cross, guys. Amen. Oh. We need to focus on the cross. We, we need to. We, we've got. It's so important. Say, I'm going to say it one more time. Matthew 8, 7. Or 17, he himself took my infirmities and bare my sickness. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord will make my bed in my sickness. Psalm 41 and 3. Boy, when I learned of that scripture many years ago, it just so blessed me. Amen. That is such an important verse. Amen. The Lord will make my bed in my sickness. You know, if you're in a hospital bed, you want somebody to make your bed, don't you? You want to get out of that bed and say, I'm out of here. Amen. And the Lord is going to restore my health. Amen. Now here's another one here. I have this confidence that when I pray according to his will, he hears me. Say, he hears me and gives me the petition that I desire of him. Amen. That's 1 John 5, 14 and 15. And here's one in Deuteronomy 7, uh, 7 and 15. The Lord take away all sickness and evil diseases from me. Amen. We actually worshiped a few minutes ago while we were partaking of Holy Communion. And Terry McAlman said, I curse cancer at the cellular level. 
at the cellular level. Amen. Not the manifestation of cancer, but we he cursed cancer at the cellular level. Amen. You need to curse diabetes at the cellular level. Amen. You need to curse uh, your arthritis, not, not the manifestation that you're twisted or having a hard time moving, but at the cellular level. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Who's going to get excited with me? Amen. Yes. The word of the Lord will not return to him void until it accomplishes its full purpose. That's Isaiah 55, 11. I believe this with all my heart, that every word, listen, don't miss this, every word out of the mouth of God will accomplish everything that he intended and will not return unto him until that is done. Right. Amen. Amen. You need to understand that. That's the promise of God. Amen. Amen. That's the promise of God in Isaiah 55 and 11. The word of the Lord will not return to him void or empty until it accomplishes its full purpose. I believe with all my heart that God has given me so much to chew on spiritually. There's a, a mighty move of God within my soul that he is working. And yes, Carol graduating to heaven is part of that. Amen. It's part of that. God is healing me. God is changing me. He's given me new vision. A lot of things. I was up very early this morning saying, God, what next? When's the last time you cried out to God? I said it a number of times during worship. Call upon him while he is near. Seek him with all of your heart. He sent his word and he healed me. Psalm 107, 20. Oh, don't you love that verse? I remember when I learned that verse many years ago, probably about 25 years ago, I sent my word and it healed me. Amen. The word of God, you realize that I'm, the, I'm not really preaching this morning. I'm just kind of imparting the word of God to you. Amen. And God said, I will send my word and heal your body. Amen. What does that mean to you? Saying that the word of God has been declared. The word of God has been spoken. We should honor the word of God. Honor the word of God. Glory in the word of God. Believe in the word of God. Pass it on like that video I showed you about the Bible. Make sure that you do everything we should do it and then make sure you pass it on. Amen. We need to pass it on more. We need to get another supply of Bibles, and we need to start making sure they get into the hands of those who need to hear the Bible. Amen. They hear enough from everything else, and God knows, and YouTube, and, and, and all the networks, and all the garbage and lies that are out there. I mean, so much to fill your soul. Stop putting that stuff in your soul. Don't do that. Listen to what God is saying to you. Listen to what God can do for this nation. This nation is lost without the Holy Spirit. Without Jesus, it's not going to happen, guys. Amen. We don't need a donkey or an elephant. We need the Lamb. Amen. We need Jesus. Amen. And revival in the Holy Spirit is the only hope. Only hope. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Say he sent his word and healed. And when I keep his fast, then shall my health spring forth speedily. That's Isaiah 58. Read the whole chapter of Isaiah 58. That's an important one. It talks about the spiritual fast. And that, that's another whole level of understanding which we will not go into here this morning. I am anointed with oil in the name of Jesus. We have anointing oil in our sanctuary at all times. Anybody can be anointed with oil and the prayer of faith shall save the sick, and the Lord shall raise him up. That's a promise of God. Only if you believe it. We sang Chain Breaker. What's part of that lyric by Zach Williams? If you believe it, you will receive it. And if you feel it, you should testify. Anointed lyric. That'll change your life. If you believe it, you can receive it. It's got to be more. It's got to be more than belief, though. It's got to be faith, and it's got to be trust. And I've showed you the difference here this morning. Let's say this together. So I'm anointed with oil in the name of Jesus, and the prayer of faith will save me in sickness, and the Lord will raise me up. Amen. We're talking about our health. 
He shall bless my bread and water and take sickness away from the midst of us. Amen. Carol and I prayed that over our seven children and seven grandchildren every day. Amen. He shall bless my bread and water and take sickness away from the midst of us. Amen. Hallelujah. That's Exodus 23, 25. The Lord will help deliver and save me because I trust in him. And that's Psalm 37 again. I staggered not at God's promise through unbelief, but I am fully persuaded that what he promised he is able to perform. And that's in Romans 4, 20, that 21. Amen. Say he is well able to perform what he promised. Amen. If you believe it, if you have faith, if you are willing to trust him. Amen. Somebody said amen. amen. Now that's important. He gives power to me. When I have no might, he increases my strength. And when I wait upon God, I will mount up with wings as an eagle. Amen. That's Isaiah 40, 29 to 31. Amen. Those of you that need more strength. Amen. Just put your hands right toward Maria right now and toward Faye and anybody that has a strength problem. Amen. The Lord once, I know Carol had an issue where she had strength issues and it was very difficult. Lord, in Jesus' name, he gives power to Maria when she has no strength. And when she waits upon God, she will mount up with wings as an eagle. Amen. Now that's a promise of God if you believe it. Amen. Amen. Say, I've got to believe it. Amen. And here's one of my all-time favorites, guys. I will admit my faults and pray for others that I may be healed. Amen. Hallelujah. And it's not just healing in your body, but healing of the soul. James 5 and 16. And here's one here that we love so much. The same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me. Amen. And shall make alive and quicken my mortal body. Say, the same spirit that raised Christ from the grave. Amen. Not a similar spirit, not, not some facsimile, not something that looks like it, smells like it, hears like it. No, it's the same spirit. Say the same spirit. The same spirit. Now, that, sometimes that's hard to receive. See, a lot of people struggle with that scripture because they don't understand how could the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead and God's going to use that spirit to heal my body? You mean he cares that much about me? Amen. Say the same spirit that raised Christ from the dead dwells in me and shall make alive my mortal body. You know, when you're discouraged or even depressed, this is an important one. I am delivered from the power of darkness and translated into the kingdom of God's dear son. Amen. That's so important. Colossians 1 and 13. Let's go through this quickly. The joy of the Lord is my strength. The Lord is the strength of my life. Nehemiah 8, 10. Amen. Are some of you feeling like, you know, I'm a little bored this morning because I know all this stuff. No, you don't. We have mental assent to many things. It's getting it into your soul and into your spirit where it comes alive in such a way that you become a powerhouse for God. If you know it on the level that he wants you to know it, you'll walk in the Wawa to get coffee this afternoon and somebody will be healed in that store. You hear what I'm saying? I believe you're... Come on, come on. Now, now, guys, come on. Oh, pastor, you're stretching me on that one. No, I'm saying the glory of God is on you. And if you believe this, and you believe it at the level that he has assigned you to believe it, you will walk into a presence of sickness, and that sickness will be healed. Amen. But you've got to regard it. You've got to love. You've got to have faith. Amen. Somebody said amen. 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 No man shall take me out of my Father's hands, for I have the gift of eternal life. Amen. John 10 and 29. Amen. Let the peace of God rule in my heart and mind, and I refuse to waste any time worrying. I refuse to waste any time worrying. Did you know that worrying is a complete waste of time? Amen. Somebody said, God is on my side. God is in me now. Who can be against me? He has already given me all things that pertain to life and godliness. Therefore, I am a partaker of his divine nature. Amen. And there's a whole list of scriptures there that I can give you. Jesus gave me the authority to use his name. Did you know that? Say, God has given me power of attorney. Amen. And what I bind on earth is bound in heaven. Come on, you guys got to say this with me. This is important. I want, I, want you to, I want to know that you're with me. You're flowing here. And we're all of one heart, one mind. No distractions. Amen. 
Jesus gave me the authority to use his name. Amen. Say the name of Jesus is what? My power of attorney. What I bind on earth is bound in heaven. And what I loose on earth is loosed in heaven. Therefore, in the name of Jesus, I bind powers of darkness and the rulers of darkness. I bind and cast down spiritual wickedness and render them harmless and ineffective against me in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. That's crucial right there. I mean, that is so crucial. Amen. Matthew 16, 19, John 16, 23 to 24, and Ephesians 6 and 12. Amen. Now when you have financial problems, let's just go over this quickly. We're almost through. I have so much here that I could spend a lot more time. Each verse is powerful, but we'll just do this quickly, and then we'll come back as the Holy Spirit leads. The wealth of the sinner is laid up and reserved for the just. Did you know that? Amen. If you're struggling with money right now, say God has reserved the wealth of the sinner is laid up and reserved for the just or the righteous. Amen. Amen. Wealth and riches shall be in the house of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Do you believe that? I believe that with all my heart. He gives me power to get wealth and to establish his covenant upon the earth. Amen. Why does God give you financial blessings? So that your bills can be paid. Amen. Amen. It's a shame if you can't pay a bill, isn't it? It's embarrassing if you can't make a mortgage or a rent payment. It's embarrassing. Nobody wants that. Amen. He gives me power to get wealth and to establish his covenant upon the earth. Amen. Deuteronomy 8 and 16. Christ has redeemed me from poverty. You want to believe that? Say it. You got to say it. Say, Christ has redeemed me from poverty. Christ has redeemed me from sickness. Christ has redeemed me from spiritual death. Amen which is separation from Almighty God. And that's in Galatians 3 and 13. Amen. For poverty, he has given me wealth. For sickness, he has given me health. And for death, he has given me eternal life. Come on, does this, I mean, this should be striking you as like the powerful, powerful word of God that's going to change me today. My whole life is going to be transformed because of this message. If you're listening and if you're receiving it into your soul, amen. For poverty, he has given me wealth. Come on, say it together. Say, for poverty, he has given me wealth. For sickness, he has given me health. For death, he has given me eternal life. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, I'm so excited about this. Amen. I delight myself in the Lord, and he gives me the desires of my heart. Psalm 37, 4. Why? Because your desires are aligning with his desires. Amen. When you are one with him in your relationship with him, I will delight myself in the Lord and he gives me the desires of my heart. I have given and it shall be given to me. Good measure pressed down and shaken together. Running over men will give to me. That's Luke 6.38. Amen. You say you're short on money. Something's going wrong with the money problem. Maybe it's because you're not giving. Amen. Maybe it's because you have held back on blessing the poor. Amen. Do you realize that even as little as a glass of cold water will not be overlooked by God? Amen. I've given and it shall be given to me. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over men give to me. Luke 6 and 38. With whatever measure I give, it is measured to me. Amen. Amen. So as you give, it will be given to you. Why would we ever hold back from blessing somebody in need? Why would we do that? That's a challenge. Amen. I sow in abundance and I reap in abundance. We're talking about money now, guys. We're talking about finances. I give cheerfully and my God has made all grace abound toward me. I have sufficiency for everything. Say all my bills are paid. Amen. I don't have any shame before the world. I don't have any shame before man. Amen. Because my bills are paid. I have sufficiency for everything. I need and do love to do good deeds. Amen. Say, you know, I don't have to be good to be saved. Christ did that for me. But I will be good because I'm saved. Did you hear what I'm saying? What, what did I just say there? That's important, okay? Okay, you don't have to be good to be saved. You just exercise faith in, in, in Christ. Amen. The thief hanging on the cross didn't get a chance to do anything or say anything or go to school or attend a church or synagogue or anything. He just looked at Christ and said, remember me. That's all he said. 
And at that moment, Christ looked at him and said, today you will be with me in paradise. That was a demonstration, maybe one of the best, if not the best in the whole Bible about the grace of God. Amen. Hallelujah. So I have no lack because my God supplies all my needs according to the riches and glory that is in Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. And that's in Philippians 4 and 19. Amen. Hallelujah. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant. God is excited when you have extra money, guys. He loves to bless you. And he wants to bless you. If you have the right attitude to receive it, amen. amen. You know, there's three kinds of people in this world, givers, takers, and receivers, amen. Takers just will take anything they can get their hands on and never give. Amen. Givers understand that it's more blessed to give than to receive. And then receivers are one that are humble enough to receive a blessing and to allow a blessing to fall on somebody else. Amen? Amen. I believe that with all my heart. The Lord has pleasure in the prosperity of his servant, and Abraham's blessings are mine. Go home and read Genesis, the 12th chapter, and you will see the blessings on Abraham, what they were. And every blessing that was promised to Abraham has been promised to you because you are in the lineage with Abraham through Christ. Say, through Christ. Now, that, that has to be explained a lot more than what I just said, and we'll do that sometime. But say, I am in the lineage of Abraham. I get his blessings because of what Christ did. All right? Christ was in the lineage of Abraham, and I am in the lineage of Christ. I even have his DNA. Amen. Somebody said amen. 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 I hope I'm challenging you this morning. And when you have difficulty making good decisions, boy, you know, the spirit of truth abides in me and teaches me all things. He guides me into truth. Therefore, I confess I have perfect knowledge of every situation and every circumstance that I come up against, for I have the wisdom of God and the mind of Christ. Amen. See, I just paraphrased that into the first person. Did you hear what I did there? Amen. This is important. Say, I have the wisdom of God and the mind of Christ. Amen. That's John 16, 13, and James 1 and 5. The Lord will perfect that which concerns me. Well, the good shepherd, I know his voice and the voice of a stranger. I will not follow. Amen. Amen. This is important. I am filled with the knowledge of the Lord's will and all wisdom and spiritual understanding. I've given you the word of God this morning. I've been faithful and given you the word of God. Amen. That's what I've given you here this morning. I will let go of old ways and put on Christ, who is renewed in me with knowledge and the image of God himself. Hallelujah. If you've made some bad decisions, the Lord wants to set you free. And then this fear thing is another big thing, and you know that's been something we've been battling with for a long time. In this nation, and even in the church, I am the body of Christ, and Satan has no power over me, for I overcome evil with good. Somebody said amen to that. I am of God and have overcome the devil, for greater is he that is in me than he that is in the world. Amen. Come on, say it with me. I will fear no evil, for you are with me, Lord. Your word and your spirit, they comfort me. Psalm 23. Come on. Amen. Come on. I am far from oppression and fear can not come near me. Amen. I will not live in fear. I will not do that. Amen. I will not live in fear. Amen. No weapon formed against me shall prosper for my righteousness is of the Lord. But whosoever or whatsoever I do shall prosper for I am like a tree planted by the rivers of water. Amen. And when you have a poor self-image, Boy, that'll destroy you. Amen. Amen. That's why we did earlier in the earlier part of our worship. I made you to confess who you are in Christ. Amen. Amen. And we're going to do that one more time and then we are through. Amen. I am complete. Say this with me. Say, I am complete in him who is the head of all principality and power. Amen. I am born of God and the evil one does not touch me. Amen. Come on. I am far from oppression and fear does not come near me. Amen. I am holy and without blame. 
before him in love. Come on, everybody. I have the mind of Christ. Amen. Come on, confess it. I have the greater one living in me. Greater is he who is in me than he that is in the world. I have received the power of the Holy Spirit to lay hands on the sick and see them recover, to cast out devils and speak with new tongues. I have the power over all the power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means harm me. Amen. Wow, I, I've given you the word of God in richness here this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. I can quench all the fiery darts of the wicked and with my shield of faith. Amen. I can do all things through Christ Jesus. Philippians 4.13. I am God's child for I'm born again of incorruptible seed of the word of God which lives and abides forever. That is a separate study that we've got to do. Not this morning, but that's important. Say, I am born of incorruptible seed of the word of God. Amen. Do you realize the seed in you from your parents has a lot to do with who you are? Amen. Amen. Has a lot to do with who you are. Say, I am born again. Say, born again. again. Get this in your spirit. Of the incorruptible seed of the word of God, which lives and abides forever. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am a joint heir with Jesus Christ. I am a partaker of his divine nature. I am an ambassador for Christ. I am a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, and a purchased person, according to 1 Peter 1, 9. I am the righteousness of God in Christ. I am the head and not the tail. I am above only and not beneath. Amen. You need to confess who you are. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. I am the salt of the earth, the light of the world. I am submitted to God, and the devil flees from me because I resist him. In the name of Jesus, James 4 and 7. There's a lot of these notes are in your bulletin. Take it with you. If you want all my notes, all you got to do is ask for them. I'll send them to you. Nothing's copyrighted, guys. It's all scripture. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. I'm just so excited about this whole concept of trust. Amen. And trust is a beautiful thing. Say belief enhanced by love equals faith. And faith combined with action is trust. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's thank the Lord. Lord, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the word. We thank you for those that are so excited about the Word of God and taking it in and processing it in their soul and understanding it and receiving it as from you. Lord, that's that's so exciting to a pastor to see someone absorbing the Word of God and processing it and receiving it into the soul because I know that the Word of God has the power to change us and to strengthen us. And do good things for us. And uh, Lord, I pray in the name of Jesus that you will, Father, just be with us and give us a wonderful Sunday. Glorify yourself in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And amen.